Hey guys, this is Magic here, and everybody and their grandma on the internet is talking about net neutrality. It would kind of be weird considering I used to be the chief information officer of a giant company if I didn't talk about it. It also kind of involves YouTube. Anyway, here is the super short version of net neutrality. So you're an internet carrier, you're building infrastructure. Oh, dial-up phased out. Now we got to drop copper, fiber, whatever. Okay, that costs money. Like, a lot of money to put fiber in the ground. So, uh, who's going to pay for it? Well, the customers. Duh. Oh, but your switches, your hubs, your routers, they can only take so much traffic because they only have so fast of a chip and so much of a flash buffer. But that's cool because you planned for it. You know that if there's, you know, 500 people on this block and in this neighborhood, you can put a central hub for DSL in and it can handle this much traffic and in an average day, this much will happen and okay, everything's cool. Then out of nowhere, YouTube, Netflix, and, you know, torrents come out. Oh crap, now these 500 people cumulatively as like an average kind of are going to use more bandwidth. So now your old, out-of-date equipment that probably should have been replaced already can't keep up. What are you going to do about it? Well, you can charge the customer more because the customer is using more bandwidth. You can go after the person who caused the bandwidth spike. Um, you can filter it, slow it down, you know, whatever you want to do. You know, there's the, what do they call that? Um, throttling. There's many different solutions to try to fight it. Um, the most common solution is just raise the price of having an internet connection, obviously. Add hidden fees, mislead people, have, you know, 12-month periods and then charge more. You know, you know what they do. It's not news. So, you know, people like AT&T, the former Time Warner, now Spectrum, Comcast, Cox Communications, all them. They go to, like, Netflix or YouTube and say, hey, between the two of you, you guys are, like, seriously, like, 20% of all of our bandwidth. This is a made-up number, but actually, it's probably not far off. Actually, I think it's higher. Anyway, they're like, okay, you guys are solely responsible for, you know, damaging our network or overloading it. Um, can you not? So, you know, what do you do? You shake them down for money. You say, hey, if you don't pay us to compensate us for this, because the money's got to come from somewhere to upgrade our networks, um, we'll just slow it down. We'll, we'll just make people, you know, run it at a lower resolution, lower data rate. We'll throttle it effectively, and they'll, you know, we'll force them to use less bandwidth. Well, at the end of the day, somebody has to pay for the more capable equipment to handle the bandwidth or they need to stop the bandwidth from occurring. So, okay, I get it. Um, you know, the internet expanded quicker and more bandwidth is needed than they anticipated. The equipment upgrades weren't within their, you know, 5, 10 year budget plan and now they need more money and it's got to come from somewhere. Now, on the flip side, Netflix and, well, to an extent, YouTube are collecting money either from ads or from subscriptions. Uh... And so they're, they're collecting money while causing the problem. You can see why ISPs might want to go after some of that money. Now, the opposing viewpoint is, like, don't build a pipe for water and then blame your customers for suddenly flushing the toilet more often or something. Oh, swimming pools just went on sale and people installed giant lawns. Now we need more water. Oh, it's everybody's fault but ours. No, you should have planned better. I mean, you're an ISP. You carry the internet. When the internet got bigger, carry more of it. Whatever. Like, just deal with it. That said, I must remind you, though, that the equipment isn't free and somebody has to pay for it. So at the end of the day, it's coming out of somebody's pocket. Uh, and honestly, at the end of the day, no matter how they look at it, it's coming out of your pocket. I mean, that's no matter what they do and no matter if net neutrality passes or not. So net neutrality says, no, you can't do that. You have to carry everything equally. Um, so you could, you could be on both sides of that, right? It, it sounds reasonable. Like, you could take the ISP side. You won't because everybody universally hates most of them. Or you could take the content provider side and say, no, just pay your CEO less and stop running stupid ads that don't do anything and save the money, budget differently, and roll out more fiber. And honestly, make a smaller profit margin to pay your CEO less. Who the hell wouldn't get behind that? So here's why people got their uh, undies in a bundle over this. Here's how net neutrality would actually go. Well, I should say if it went away. I don't even remember what the current law is, to be perfectly honest. So with no net neutrality whatsoever, it's like made a law that it doesn't have to be a law. I, I don't know. It goes away. ISPs go to somebody who's using up most of their bandwidth. They're like, we're shaking it off for money. We're going to slow down your Netflix stream uh, for all your customers unless you pay us uh, 50 cents per customer on average or something like that. So Netflix either caves in because they don't want to be slowed down or you might go to an alternative or they fight back and it becomes a complete like, I don't know, crap throwing contest. <laughs> so then uh, Netflix pops up on your screen. Hey, you have, we'll just say time order because they're not around anymore. Uh, they're purposely slowing down this connection. We have detected that they are throttling your connection, lowering your quality on purpose while demanding money from us. And if we pay it, we have to charge you more. We highly recommend you switch to a different ISP. But here's the problem. What's the point of putting that up if they all collude and they all do it? And plus, 
in most areas in the U.S., there's either one or two ISPs to choose from. Usually it's one. They'll kind of say, okay, you take that city, we'll take that city, okay, done. And then they can charge whatever they want because who the hell are you going to switch to? I mean, mobile data, have you seen that? I mean, <laughs> 10 gigs will cost you a little bit of money and you can burn it up in about two days watching Netflix. So usually it's AT&T for DSL or it's um, uh, Cox, Comcast, or Spectrum for cable. Oh, in case you're wondering, yes, it was deeply inefficient and one of the stupidest decisions ever to run phone lines and coaxial lines to pretty much every house instead of just kind of getting together and making it work on one. They had to either raise the lines or dig up the ground twice. Yeah. Well, in most cases, not all cases. So why pop up something saying, hey, at and is doing this. Hey, Comcast is doing this. Hey, hey, all the options you could possibly go with are doing this. You should switch. Well, to who? Now, there is an answer for that. Uh, in the U.S., there's a law stating that ISPs have to lease out their infrastructure or network at, quote, a reasonable price or fair market value or some stupid wording like that to anybody at all, pretty much, who wants to, like, start an ISP. So you've seen it. You go to the cell phone company, the, I don't know, the small computer and electronics chain. I think Costco does this now. I've heard all kinds of weird stuff. Like, I, I heard, like, somebody had a butcher shop that also ran an ISP. That's just weird. So you go to Slippery Steve's Bacon and Discount DSL, and AT&T, or eh, sometimes it's TDS who owns the lines, they will have to lease out their network and make it available to that little tiny ISP, but they'll do all kinds of tricks to, to keep that from happening. Just within the law, they'll try to stop it. But still... I mean, in most large cities, there's going to be these little tiny ISPs that got these ghetto crap, you know, off of eBay modems and just whatever, but they're dirt cheap. So, I mean, what would you do if you're going up against, you know, the, the customer support level, which, God, I can't say that without laughing. <laughs> we'll just say the buying power of the modems in bulk. How about that? Because definitely not the customer service level. <laughs> But the marketing budget and the PR budget of AT&T if you have a thousand clients and you're a tiny little DSL provider and you're both using the same lines. And also whenever something fixes, they'll be like, oh, that was a problem reported by our competitor. We're going to not fix that until the absolute last second we're legally required to. Yeah, kind of hard to be a small ISP. But um, yeah, you could switch to them. You could start looking around. So whenever people say there's only one option... It's either because somebody was too lazy to open an ISP in your area or some big company just did everything they could to put them out of business. So would there be options? Maybe. Would they stop throttling in places that have options? Probably. But some people will get burned by it. So it's not just, oh, let's pass the book off. Let's all blame each other. Content providers blame the ISP. ISPs blame the content providers for not paying them for the bandwidth that they themselves are causing. I mean, they're the one causing the traffic jam. I could see both sides of it, like I said. But see... That's the tip of the iceberg. If you've been paying attention so far, either Netflix is going to cave and they'll charge you more money so that they can pass it along to, we'll say, AT&T, or AT&T is going to cave to Netflix's demands to not pay them and to handle the upgrades, the equipment, and the bandwidth, they're going to charge you more. In either case, you foot the bill for them putting in more advanced modems and dropping fiber. So who cares? Who cares what side you're on? You're, getting, you're the one paying for it, no matter who, who it is. Who cares? Where's well, the problem? Here's what would really actually happen. One person, one billionaire, one single person acquired all of blah company, we'll say. I mean, you got your Ted Turners, your... I don't remember who else. I think he owns TNN. That's why it's on my mind. But you got your billionaires. Uh, they have, um, you know, a good sense for business, but they also have way the hell too much money. They really honestly don't care if one particular business takes a little bit of a hit because something they say or do. So they decide, I feel this way on this, on, on this controversial topic, that abortion, gay marriage, whatever. So what am I going to do about it? I think society needs to change because they need to match my opinion, which, yeah, activists, I get it. Everybody's entitled to their opinion and, you know, double points for you if you try to make the government change to fit it. I mean, that's called democracy just because I might not agree with you. At least you're going out there and trying to, I don't know, fix stuff or whatever in your own mind. Oh, so what can I do? Hmm, let's say I'm Ted Turner. Let's make CNN totally tear down Trump because I hate Trump. So the orders come down literally from the top, like the one guy, not a board of directors, one person that's like, hey, bash Trump nonstop. Hey, MSNBC, kiss Obama's butt nonstop. Hey, giant conglomerate that supplies most of the U.S.'s whatever, I don't know, food or something. I don't know, I'm making this one up. 
uh, take one percent of your income and donate to a pro-abortion thing to send it to Planned Parenthood because I'm I'm all in support of that and anti-abortion people are idiots so I have the power and I'm gonna change it. Yeah, that is like how to not run your company 101, but hello, people do it. I mean, Fox News, CNN, and MSNBC are a thing. If you think people will not take their personal beliefs and translate it down to business at the consumer level, holy crap, could I give you some examples? I mean, I don't even need to give examples. Most of them, I guess you could say, most of the large companies and conglomerates. So what are they going to do with net neutrality? I mean, look up who owns uh, Spectrum, who owns AT&T. Oh, boy. I think Comcast is owned by a pretty controversial company, too, if I recall. Don't really care enough to look it up myself, honestly. But, um, hey, you know FoxNews.com? Let's slow them down to a crawl unless they pay us. In fact, you know what? Don't even demand money. Just slow them down. In fact, you know what? Screw them all together. Block their website. Now we're at, like, China-level crazy, where they just block and filter everything to, you know, promote their whatever. Their belief system, their government, their propaganda, whatever. So if you took every single anything, YouTube video, article, news site, anything that looked remotely conservative and slowed it down to one-tenth bandwidth or just blocked it all together, oh boy, you would in most cases be literally preventing people from accessing certain information. That's like 1982, is that the name of the book? 81? Whatever it was with Big Brother watching where they control absolutely everything and they try to control how people think by manipulating, like, the nature of the news and information and everything. So, like, I mean, get this. I make a YouTube video that's pro-gun. Um, Ted Turner doesn't like it, and I'm sure he owns an ISP. I don't even know or care. Him or someone like him is like, guns are scary, which, honestly, I think he's pretty pro-gun. <laughs> this is a terrible example. But he's like, no, nah, anything that looks pro-gun, any channel, block the whole channel or slow it down so it streams at, you know, 120p so nobody watches it. Slow it down to 200 kilobits per second and see if anybody's dedicated enough to still watch it or if they'd just be like, oh, this video quality is crap. It's not even about demanding money, it's about manipulating information. And manipulating information for any side, either a thing that you're all for or a thing that you're against, it's still bad. You have to step back and admit, it's not good, it's not fair, it's not healthy, it's not right. And if you think that's some kind of ridiculous nightmare scenario, um, no. First of all, (laughs) companies have already started to do it, either in other countries or here. Um, and also just faint little hints of non-net neutrality have crept into, uh, especially mobile markets, where instead of saying, we're going to slow down YouTube because we don't like them, uh, we're just going to let you access our service and anything you stream on there does not count against your, uh, data limit. And also we charge overages and our data rates are ridiculous. That is, besides the textbook definition of an unfair advantage and abuse of monopoly, which is exactly what Google just got nailed for massively for over a billion dollars over in Europe, well, besides that, it's a media outlet. What if it's a news site instead of just a music streaming site? What if it is a music streaming site? Because, you know, spoiler alert, it is, that example that I gave. Or even if it was like a video site, um, and then you just ban any highly conservative anything. Oh, you, you, your company's stance on abortion is this? Okay, anybody saying differently, just block them from our platform. And then give people, like, an unfair reason to watch just our platform and stay away from the open ones where people can post virtually anything, like YouTube. Although, lately it's a little different. Oh yeah, you can have a gun channel, but, you know, we'll just take away all your money. So yeah, giving your own services preferences, that's lawsuit-worthy monopoly abuse, but um, people would do it. They're doing it right now. I don't know why I said they would do it. It's literally going on right now. So I think the people that right now are saying that everybody wants net neutrality killed, um, or the ISPs do because they want to control information and brainwash people and influence society, I think that's going a little far. I mean, it is within the realm of, you know, realistic, maybe. But I think at this stage, it's about money. It's just about money, profitability, and that's it. But would it turn into some cultural society war where they try to influence information eventually? Oh, hell yes. Probably within like a year or two. Like it would devolve to that pretty damn quick. I mean, remember when the three major 24-hour cable news networks used to at least pretend that they report all news and aren't biased? Now they're just like, screw it. We're the conservative one. We're the liberal one. Screw you. They don't even try to hide it anymore. My gosh. So that, at the end of the day, is the real reason net neutrality needs to go. So don't believe all the technical explanations. Don't believe any crap coming out of your ISP's mouth about, you know, real nice-sounding, real reasonable, logical-sounding arguments. Because, um, yeah, I would say everything I said in the second half of this video pretty much trumps all of that. They are reasonable reasons, but they're purposely telling half the story to influence you. (laughs) Big surprise, who doesn't do that? So, you know... Phone your senator, send an email, send something to the FCC or TC or whoever the hell is doing this. Probably TC. 
If you're not from America and you're like, who cares? Um, most of the sites you go to are run by American companies. Uh, most of the lines are owned by the ISPs, so they can slow it down before it even hits the border. So this, you know, they could start filtering your content too, slowing it down and that kind of stuff. I mean, Netflix is kind of big around the world, for an example. But if you are in the US, I mean, this is the FTC deciding this. Or CC, I don't know. Whoever it is, look it up, sign a petition, send an email, whatever, phone your congressman, whatever you want to do. I mean, last time this came up, a lot of people were in support of it, like Congress-wise, and then they noticed that 95% of their constituents were <laughs> against this. I mean, you could probably bring up, like, let's make it illegal to speak Spanish anywhere in America. You'd probably get, like, 92% of people against it. Net neutrality was about the most one-sided issue in the history of legal stuff. So every congressman is like, I don't care what I think. I want to get reelected. They are never going to shut up about this if I vote for or against net neutrality. So I don't really remember what rulings, what actual like laws came out of this. I think it was just pushed out of Congress and there was never a thing. But we need to get net neutrality on the books because then it's settled. I think right now it's gray area or it's just not specifically against the law or, or they're trying to repeal a law that kind of allows it or something. I don't know. Hey, I know the technical side in the history. I don't know the legal side. Either way, tell people about it. Link them this video. Talk about it on Facebook. You know, tell your congressman you'll never vote for them again if they vote against net neutrality. On the last couple of years, uh, Congress has received cumulatively about 500 million plus in uh, donations, we'll say, more like bribes, from uh, the major ISPs in support of uh, not net neutrality. Let's just call it not neutrality. That sounds way cooler. I don't know if you knew this or not, but members of Congress um, really like money. But you know, it saves an awful lot of money not getting not elected. So yeah, I mean, they could give each congressman a billion dollars. It wouldn't matter if they know they're not getting reelected. Actually, at that point, they would probably just take it and retire. I'm sure there's a dollar amount, but you know, whatever. So that's my summary of net neutrality. That's what's really going on with it. The political, the ethical, the social, the everything. So if you're for it, what the hell is wrong with you at this point? You're clearly not a logical person or you're just not getting it. There really is only one side to be on this issue, or you could call it a battle instead of an issue, because at this point it's a battle. It's ISPs versus the entire rest of mankind in society. Now, pretty much every company that is on the internet, like, at all, is completely for net neutrality because they don't want to get shaken down for money, and, you know, basically it's extortion, but it would be legal then. So I reiterate, it is completely everybody on Earth versus the ISPs. And to an extent, Congress, I guess, by extension. So get out there and do something about it. Or at least, I mean, hey, you watch the video, you're knowledgeable about it. If somebody asks you a question about it or comes up a conversation, now you can tell them what's really going on. Or if you're lazy like I am, just send them a link to this. So that's about all I got to say about it. Uh, I'm going to go, I don't know, email my congressman or something. Kind of emailing the NRA right now. <laughs> in case you aren't following that on Twitter. Totally unrelated matter. But um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you next video.